Hey guys, today I want to talk about the footwork that we use as an infielder to get rid of the ball more quickly and more accurately. So I was doing lessons and I was working with some younger infielders and one of the things I noticed is that guys use a whole lot of different ways to get rid of the ball. Some guys cross in front, some guys step behind. Um, there's a whole lot of different ways. But what I noticed is a lot of them don't do it the way that you'll see older, more experienced infielders do it. So if you watch major league infielders and just professional infielders in general, everybody uses the same footwork and they're all taught the same footwork. You'll never really see um, an older guy or major league player cross in front or cross behind or do anything crazy out of the ordinary. It's all pretty much the same. So. I was trying to get these younger players to understand that there's a right way to do it and there's a wrong way. It's not like a lot of things where everyone has their own style and you can do it a whole bunch of different ways. This is something that is, you'll see it used the same way throughout professional baseball. All infielders do it. So I thought it was important to start to teach these kids, even though they were young, that this is the way that's going to make it easiest for you to get the job done. And that's all we're looking for, to make your job easier and to help you do it better. So what we're going to do here, and this is uh, Starlin Castro, shortstop from the Cubs. And um, this doesn't just apply to shortstops. This applies to third baseman, second baseman, first baseman when they're charging, throwing home, throwing a third. Um, catchers use this, this type of footwork when they come out to re receive a bunt. You can use this at every position, so it's important to get this footwork down. So what we're going to do right now, let's go through it. Um, there's two ways, and we're basically looking at a ball that's hit to us, um, you know, a ball that we're going to field. The normal, everyday, routine ball. We're not looking at backhands. We're not looking at balls hit way to our glove side in the hole. We're looking at balls that are hit around us that are going to be routine, routine balls. And there's two ways to do this. This is going to be... First, we're going to look at what you do. If you have a little bit of time, you have a runner that's not really an A or a B runner, someone that you'll have a little bit more time and you don't have to rush things. So let's go into it and let's watch Castro here. And we'll see he's moving in, breaks his feet down. And when we're talking about footwork for this um, segment, we're looking at footwork from this point on. So from when you field the ball till you get rid of the ball. And what you'll notice everybody do, all infielders, is they're going to replace the feet. So they're going to take the right foot and they're going to replace where this left foot was. They're going to take the left foot and they're going to make a move or a stride towards where they're throwing. So it's two steps. It's this foot replaces here. This foot goes to where you're throwing. Throw the ball. Now in this first case, we're looking at a slower runner. So... You replace the feet and then you can add a little shuffle step if you have time. You don't always have to just go boom, boom, throw. That's the way it happens a lot as you get older because base runners are faster and you don't always have a lot of time. But there are times where the base runner isn't going to be very quick and you're going to have some time to set your feet. So if we watch Castro here, here's the move. You field it, you take the right foot. Put it where the left foot was, left foot goes towards where you're throwing. That's it. Replace the feet and throw. Now when I talk about other players, younger players, players that haven't played a lot, um, really haven't been taught the proper footwork, you'll see all types of things. You'll see this foot swing out around and then this foot go. You'll see them cross over backwards so they're getting further away from their target. You'll see You'll see a hundred different types of things. But this footwork here is what everybody uses, and it's the most efficient way to get your momentum going towards the base that you're trying to throw to and not tangle your feet up. When we're crossing either way, you'll see kids, you know, hit a hit a toe on the back of their heel or vice versa. You'll see a lot of sloppy footwork. This is the easiest, most simplest way to get your momentum going the first base or whatever base you're throwing, and you're not going to trip over yourself. Now let's watch him as he finishes. So he makes this move right here, and this is where he has time, and he's going to take one more shuffle step, and all he does again is replace the feet. 
and then he throws. So it's always replacing the feet. There's never a crossover of any sort. It's always replace, and then you get some time. All you're going to do here is replace the feet again and throw. Now let's go back a little bit. Same balls hit to you. You have a faster runner, or maybe it's a slower ball hit, and you've got to charge a little bit. All it will be in that case is you're going to field, replace the feet, and throw right here. That's all it is. This is the play that you're going to see um, a good amount of times, uh, especially in Major League Baseball, where you don't always have a ton of time to goof around. The lower you go in levels, or the younger the player, you'll see more steps. Sometimes guys will take two shuffles, three shuffles, four shuffles. I don't think that there needs to be any more shuffles other than here it is. If you need one extra shuffle, that's fine. But we get in trouble when we're shuffling and shuffling and shuffling. And you'll see this all of a sudden now. The base runner is getting down the line. Sometimes the, the infielder doesn't know the speed of the runner. And now they have to rush. You'll see Aaron throws. Sometimes you'll even see a guy beat out a routine ball because of too many shuffles. So I'd limit it to one shuffle after your primary replacing of the feet. One shuffle for slower runners. Get rid of the ball. For a faster runner, it's just replace the feet and throw from here. And make sure you work on this in practice and work on these two. Work on a slower runner in your mind. Work on a faster runner. What I like to do is I practice a lot with the replace the feet and throw because that's a little bit more difficult. You'll see younger players, they're going to want to shuffle, shuffle, shuffle all the time. you got to get those guys to field, replace the feet, and throw it. One easy way for young guys to practice this is to do it ball and glove or ball in hand, however you want to say it. So all you do is you put the ball in your glove. That way you don't have to worry about fielding it. You're just worrying about the footwork. So you're going to simulate yourself getting a ground ball. You're going to have the ball in your glove. You're going to go down to receive it. And now since you have the ball, all you need to worry about is the feet and the footwork. And this is how you're going to kind of build rhythm into your ground ball, into your footwork. It's a good way to use with younger players so they don't have to worry about too many things at once. They don't have to worry about fielding it and doing all this stuff and then the footwork. Just worry about the footwork because it's important to focus on this part of the game. So try this out. If you're a coach, get your infielders to understand what's supposed to happen. Explain to them the ways that you can do it and just get it down over and over again through repetition. All right. Hope this guys hope this helped you out guys. Uh, give it a shot. Let me know what you think. Thanks.